I remember a Sukkot, a Sukkot song that I learned a few years ago. It begins, Sukkot, it's time to go outside. And that's really the essence of this holiday. Sukkot beckons us outside of our homes, our permanent stable structures, and commands us to spend time in a flimsy hut where we're exposed to the elements. In another sense, Sukkot calls us to get outside of our normal perception and values and see them from another perspective. Interestingly, the Mishnah teaches, Adam ose sukkato keva uveto arai. A person should make their sukkah, their permanent residence, keva, something fixed or established, and their actual house, their bait, their temporary residence, arai. In other words, our actual home is supposed to become the place where we spend minimal time during the week, and the sukkah, flimsy as it is, or maybe it's just mine, becomes our primary dwelling. What does it mean for a sukkah, the bare minimum of what you could describe as a house to be treated as keva, fixed and established? Our sages say that it means that we make our life there for a week. We eat meals, study, spend time during the day, and if we're brave, sleep in it. Rabbi Ovadia Bartanura, the 15th century Italian commentator, counsels that if we have nice dishes or bedding, we should put them in the sukkah. This gesture makes the sukkah feel more like home rather than roughing it in a tent. Of course, inclement weather does limit our ability to make the sukkah a fixed dwelling. The same Mishnah adds that if it rains, one is permitted to go inside, specifically if the rain is spoiling your meal. And the weather could interfere with another essential mitzvah of Sukkot, about which Moses instructs the Israelites in Deuteronomy. V'samachta v'chagecha v'hayita ach sameach. You shall rejoice on your festivals. You shall have nothing but joy. And it's hard for most of us to be joyful in a sukkah when it's pouring. I'm struck by the notion that we can enact a psychological transformation, turning something that is normally permanent in our lives, the roof over our head, into something temporary. And that which is normally temporary into something permanent. This year, the idea seems especially resonant. Things that we thought were temporary, quarantining, mask wearing, social distancing, for example, seem to have become permanent parts of our life. And things we consider to be permanent foundations or at least permanent aspirations of our country, democracy, civility, equality under the law, seem now to be fragile, their endurance far from guaranteed. Realizing our vulnerability is disquieting, even frightening. But the Mishnah reminds us Adam ose sukato keva uveto arai. It is up to each of us to make that which is permanent temporary and that which is temporary permanent. These transformations are in our hands. What activities or behaviors would you like to make permanent fixtures of your life, even when the virus abates? Which do you see as temporary aberrations to discard? As norms are overturned all around us, what are the principles that matter to you? the stable foundations of your existence. In one sense, Sukkot is about reversals and transformations, but in a deeper sense, it's about stillness, quiet, and space. This joyous festival reminds us to stop doing and just be. It calls us to sit outside and appreciate the beauty all around us, the ever-changing pageant of nature, the ongoing drama of creation, in a time of instability and confusion, Sukkot anchors us in something greater than ourselves, teaching us that weather fluctuates and homes may come and go, but God's sheltering presence is permanent, keva. What a gift we've been given, a chance to taste joy and peace in simple, tangible ways. So I hope we'll all have time, whether in a sukkah at home or in the Bethel sukkah, to sit outside on a quiet, sunny afternoon sip a cup of coffee or tea in the sukkah, maybe read a good book or chat with someone that we love. And when night falls and we look up at the stars shining down us in all their beauty through fresh green schach of our sukkah, maybe realize that it's not the sturdy walls and roof of our house that gives us shelter. It's friendship and love, the strength of faith, the enduring comfort of tradition and community. And we give thanks for all the blessings that sustain us even now. Chag Sameach and Shabbat Shalom. May we all know the joy of this season.